Today, I'm going to draw some parallels between several major franchises that have all gone woke recently. You may notice a particular pattern between all of them. On Star Trek Discovery, Michael Burnham is basically a glorified retcon. She's inserted into Spock's past, and apparently she helped influence him at a young age and made him the great Spock that we all knew and loved in his later life. Spock couldn't be great all on his own. He needed the help of Michael Burnham, and without her, he wouldn't have become the legend we saw in the original series and the films. John Connor was once the central figure of the Terminator franchise, almost like a prophesied messiah, a future liberator of the human race from the oppression of the Skynet machines. But in Terminator Dark Fate, the most recent Terminator film, young John is brutally killed and he's usurped in his role as saviour of humanity by a young woman of colour named Danny Ramos, a female illegal immigrant. Doctor Who was always a male, and by changing the character to a female, it alters and complicates the nature of the Doctor's relationships with other characters past and present. For example, we know that the Doctor was a father and, indeed, a grandfather. He's also had romantic relationships with women. And though it was possible for Time Lords to change their gender, the reason it was done in this day and age is obvious. Feminism. Wokeness. Just like with the Star Wars message about the Force being female, Apparently, on Doctor Who, we can only hope that the future is going to be all girl. As she says, is the future going to be all girl? We can only hope. This change to the Doctor being a female seems to also coincide with depictions of white men being terrible. As Critical Drinker recently pointed out in the 11th series of Doctor Who, Fun though it was being forcefully re-educated on such diverse topics as white men being racist, White men destroying the environment. White men being women for some reason. White men brutally dividing ethnic communities. White men being deadbeat dads. And of course, white men burning women alive because they're secretly gay. Indeed, and I would add to that, that you can't empower the female characters by dragging down the male characters. The Doctor should have remained male. If the writers wanted a strong female character in the primary lead role, they should have created an entirely new female character in a new Doctor Who spin-off series. Anyway, in this recent 12th series of Doctor Who, we learned that the Doctor believes becoming female was an upgrade. Don't be ridiculous, Franklin. I've read the files. The Doctor is a man. I've had an upgrade. Hi. Now we learn that the Doctor has previously been a woman of colour in some previously unknown regeneration from the past, thus retconning the character's history. And also, I've previously mentioned the following. There's a diversity agenda clearly going on. The character of MJ, Spider-Man's love interest, has always been a natural redhead. But in the latest films, she's played by a black woman, an actress by the name of Zendaya, and she's a fine actress. However... This is a depiction of the character that obviously isn't true to the original source material. I don't believe that Kirsten Dunst was a natural redhead, but she played MJ as a redhead in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies because in the comics and the cartoons, MJ was a natural redhead. Now we have a new live-action Little Mermaid from Disney, and the character of Ariel is being cast with a black woman. Why is this happening to my people? I'm Ginger. I'm a fair-skinned, freckly, red-headed man with green eyes and no soul. I've had to deal with the lack of a soul my whole life. The rest of you have soul privilege, by the way, so please check your soul privilege. As a person of ginger, I feel uniquely qualified to ask the question, why is the movie and TV industry erasing my people in their works of fiction? Redheads represent only 2% of the world's population, and we're apparently an endangered species. I take this very personally. It's deeply offensive. Also... People say things like, who cares? It's just a fictional character, bro. But notice, they only say this when the character is being changed from white to black. But if a traditionally black fictional character is changed to a white person, then it's racist, right? You're not going to see T'Challa from Black Panther recast with a white actor. The left would be outraged. Understandably so. They'd be very upset. That's the hypocrisy I can't stand. And I wouldn't want that to happen to that character. I've actually grown to quite like T'Challa, and I wouldn't want him depicted any other way. The following is a recent article from the BBC. Is it time for the all-white period drama to be made extinct? The popularity of the genre has traditionally been made an obstacle for black Asian minority ethnic performers 
who have been excluded from lead roles. But this may not hold much longer, writes Hannah Flint. Period dramas have served as the backbone of British cinema and television ever since the first films began production at the tail end of the 19th century. But more often than not, these productions have had one major similarity, an all-white cast. Well, actually, that's possibly because such productions have attempted to go for historical accuracy. Britain was once much less diverse than it is today. One of the major limitations for black, Asian, minority, ethnic performers in the UK has traditionally been the industry's obsession with constantly doing Dickens, Shakespeare and Austen. As Dr. Miranda Kaufman, historian and author of Black Tudors, The Untold Story points out, productions based on how they were originally conceived by the author will only ever have other ethnicities in minor roles, she continues, or in no roles whatsoever. However, filmmakers have become increasingly more imaginative in their interpretation of these texts. So sorry that the classics and some of the most important English literary works of all time were written by white authors in a time when Britain was entirely ethnically homogenous. Denying this truth is historical revisionism. Last year, the BBC's version of Victor Hugo's Le Miserable featured David... Oi, uh, Oi Loa and Adil Akhtar in the lead roles of Inspector Javert and Monsieur Thernandier, while its latest Dickens adaptation co-produced with FX, A Christmas Carol, recast the Cratchits as a mixed-race family. And this week sees the UK cinema release of Armando Lanucci's The Personal History of David Copperfield, which has Dev Patel playing the eponymous Copperfield and a slew of black Asian minority ethnic actors like Benedict Wong, Rosalind Elazar, and Nikki Amuka Bird rounding out the cast. My apologies if I mispronounced any of those names. Notice that there's never calls for recasting of non-white historical figures or fictional characters with white actors, and when there is, it's called whitewashing. Chris Dangerfield also recently discussed this article, and he contrasted it with another article from the BBC. The following article is from 2015. In 2015, the BBC had an article, When White Actors Play Other Races, The practice of whitewashing white actors in non-white roles is still prevalent in Hollywood, despite widespread condemnation and protest. Why does it continue, Tom Brooks reports. That's quite the double standard, isn't it? Ethnic Europeans can have their historical figures or fictional characters in their classic literary works recast with actors of different races, because our history appears to be problematic, I guess, and this will be celebrated. But recasting non-white characters or historical figures with white actors receives widespread condemnation and protest. Interesting. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Culture is the story we tell ourselves about ourselves. And it's clear that some iconic TV shows and films are reflections of the times we're living in. Our media appears to be reflecting the progressive, politically correct social engineering and demographic changes that our societies are currently going through.